Creation and sound. Tone and silence. Sphere of infinity, of time and of eternity. Air of commitment, of the great masters. I want an instrument that lifts me onto a higher plane, says the great pianist Abdel Rahman El Bashar. A world which touches the heart of many people, their own search, which resonates harmoniously with an ancient Persian legend. The wise man Hafiz held that the free soul had no desire to become enmeshed in the prison of the mortal clay of corruptible matter. And, he continued, it was only when God charmed the soul with the sound of music played by angels that the soul became enchanted. Only then was she willing to flow into the body in order to experience the music, and thus, life itself. An instrument is only great when it has this ability, continued El Bashar. I have always loved Bechstein because of its intensity its tender tone, its singing sound. Was für eine Entwicklung bis zu diesem Flügel. Mein Vater hatte damals dieses alte Klavier gekauft, ohne dass meine Eltern auf einem jemals gespielt hätten. Ich war fünf und bekam Unterricht, sehr zum Leidwesen unserer Nachbarn. Meine Freude daran war anfangs relativ, aber plötzlich hat mich Musik so bezaubert. Und der Klang gerade eines Flügels hat mich im Innersten berührt. Ich wollte unbedingt Pianisten werden. Und doch ist alles eher nebulös, als wäre dieser Wunsch immer in meiner Seele gewesen. Als brächte ein Instrument in mir selbst etwas zum Klingen. Etwas, was ich bin. Eine Art Resonanz mit beglückender Lebendigkeit. Pathways to Music roadways of life. The journey of a Karl Bechstein piano, like that of a Stradivarius, starts here, high up in the Italian Val di Fiemme. More precisely, in the wood growing here. Near the altitude of the tree line, the harshness of the environment for a spruce leads to very slow growth and correspondingly tight annular rings. This produces the best possible characteristics for the creation of the vital soundboard, which is, if you like, the heart of every piano, grand or upright. It is almost as if the tension, the pressure on or against the irrepressible vitality of the trees produces the most beautiful of diamonds. For the highest category of a C. Bechstein concert grand piano, only wood grown at over 1,200 meters is chosen. These trees grow at the stateliest pace of all. Such wonderful wood is a treasure. It's guarded accordingly and treated by C. Bechstein with the closest possible attention. The local woods, mainly beech and pine as well as spruce, sometimes go through drying cycles for as long as five years. Only the finest of materials prepared to the absolute optimum can form the basis. Without it, any attempt to construct a perfect instrument can never succeed. Das Material im Klavierbau ist natürlich besonders wichtig in Bezug auf die Klangqualität und die Spielfähigkeit unserer Instrumente. Leider ist es heute so, dass die Beschaffungsqualität der Materialien bei Metall und auch bei Holz immer schwieriger wird. The uncompromising approach that we have seen at the very outset with the search and selection of materials for either a grand piano or an upright is an axiom at Bechstein, a tradition that has been running for more than 160 years. This fundamental refusal to compromise has always been augmented by Karl Bechstein's musical vision, as well as his extraordinary innovative spirit. Back in the 19th century, he had already established the name as the brand of choice for the most famous pianists and composers in the world. Brahms, Debussy, Ravel, Liszt, Rachmaninoff, Wagner, Bartok and Busoni composed on their Bechsteins. In 1901, the new concert hall in London's Wigmore Street was named Bechstein Hall, 
Around 300 concerts took place there every year. Even Queen Victoria ordered a sea Bechstein. It was richly gilded, especially for her, but she went on to decorate it herself with paintings. In the last few years, Bechstein has produced replicas in this and other historic styles. Bechsteins have always been famous for their excellent playability, but it's the quality of their sound that has carried them into legend, as the pianist Salim Ashkar agrees. I decided to play the Beethoven cycle on a Bechstein because for me this piano gives me everything I need to express this music. It has the brilliance, it has the warmth of the tone, and it has this quality where the sound is carrying you can create a real uh, singing tone that I think is very important to all music, but uh, especially important to Beethoven. Am Anfang war da dieses suchende Gefühl, diese Sehnsucht. Sehnsucht nach vielleicht kann man es als Schönheit beschreiben. Und in bestimmter Musik konnte ich sie finden. Es war die Suche wie in einem neu entdeckten Universum. Aber sie wurde auch so etwas wie bei sich sein, in dieser weiten Welt ein Zuhause zu haben. As well as unconditional diligence from beginning to end, as seen in the selection of materials, a further Bechstein axiom runs parallel throughout the build process. The constant search and integration of the latest technology such as low emission glues and varnishes. The best glues for the precisely defined veneers in the frame of a grand piano are a prerequisite for securing the thousandfold doweling on the individual layers. The importance of the experience garnered over time by long standing employees when sound, precise judgment is called for is also brought out here. How strongly does the glue have to be applied depending on the type of wood? the thickness and absorbency of each layer and its position in the laminated structure. The tight time window within which the layers must enter the press demands concentration. So does compliance with the exact pressure buildup within the mold. No tolerance up, none down. A period of rest to allow curing now follows. This is vital so that the new shape can be perfectly absorbed into the layers of veneers. They lie resting for many months. Only then, completely proofed against any distortion, can the posts be fitted precisely. As of now, nothing in the frame is allowed to change. But this process is not just about extreme stability and longevity. The avoidance of any impairment in sound quality is equally prioritised. The frame of a piano is part of the entire resonating body and its perfection makes an essential contribution to the C. Bechstein sound. All components are related to the final result, each one resonating with all the others in a holistic approach to piano building. Die Resonanz unserer Instrumente entsteht nicht zuletzt daher, dass die Mitarbeiter, die die Instrumente bauen, durchweg auch in der Lage sind, diese zu beurteilen, weil sie nämlich Musik lieben, weil sie Töne lieben, weil sie die Technik lieben, wie diese Instrumente hier zusammengesetzt werden. Invisible at the heart of all this is a symbiotic resonance that motivates the whole team to manufacture a special instrument. The relatively soft wood is supported by the utterly contrasting nature of the hard steel to absorb the 30 tons of tension built up by the tuned strings. The sheer precision of the cast iron plate is a self-evident example of the perfect interaction between craftsmanship and state-of-the-art technology at Bechstein. The most sensitive drilling and milling operations are carried out by CNCs with a precision that cannot be achieved by hand. In spite of this, the training of every employee begins intensively with precise craftsmanship. The aim is to build an empathy with the essential skills as opposed to mere processes. This connectivity with the company creates two big advantages. It encourages the apprentices to stay on at Bechstein when they are fully trained, and it creates a pool of potential ambassadors for Bechstein excellence at the homes of their worldwide partners. Development of competence in the individual 
reflects the experience and capability of the company as a whole. Through long-standing tradition, this has grown into an innovative advantage. Ich muss sagen, dass am Anfang das sehr überwältigend war, denn alles war sehr neu und ähm, es war auch alles ganz anders, aber auch besser, als ich erwartet hätte. Und man hat sich da so reingelebt und umso mehr man wirklich dann sich in diese Welt eingelassen hat und äh, sich mehr mit den ganzen Prozessen beschäftigt hat, umso faszinierender wurde es dann. Und ähm, ich glaube, heute ist sind Klaviere und auch Flügel so fest in meinem Leben verwurzelt, dass ich mir eigentlich einen Alltag ohne den Klavierbau gar nicht mal mehr vorstellen könnte. Und langsam wird so ein großes Instrument zu so einem handwerklichen Kunstwerk, tatsächlich zu so einer Art Heimat. Du musst lernen, du musst üben, üben, um mehr und mehr zu verinnerlichen. Das tut auch weh. Aber fast plötzlich ist das Instrument zu so etwas geworden, ohne die du dir deine Welt nicht mehr vorstellen kannst. Human effort and hard work. Fundamentals for excellence in performance. Endurance. Stoic patience. Uncompromising precision with the seemingly endless filling and sanding. And this is only for the castings. Refilling, resanding, step by operational step. Meditative aspects alternating with the nightmare multiplicity of tiny corners, roundings, edges, with ever finer sandpaper. Finally, that silky smooth surface is achieved that offers a perfect foundation for the gleaming luster of the castings. Particles, layer by layer, the finest of increments, rather like a minimally developing theme by Ulrike Hager. At the end, a C. Bechstein grand piano plate shines like gold with a weight of half a ton. Sheer strength in a settled material that will withstand the 30 tons the strings will exert over the years to come. In order to exclude unwanted resonances, the iron alloy must be designed in such a way that the vibration that develops in the cast plate when the strings are struck is carefully controlled. The medium may fancy itself at peace, but not even the sophisticated casting, like everything else at Bechstein, can escape the company's continuous research and development. Also, grundsätzlich werden natürlich die Instrumente schon mehr wie 160 Jahre gebaut oder Musikinstrumente in dieser Form. Aber wie schon gesagt, also aufgrund von veränderten Rohstoffen durch neue Technologien, die verfügbar sind, sind Anpassungen notwendig. Und das ist ein Gebiet, wo wir natürlich versuchen, Sachen auch effektiver zu fertigen, rationeller zu fertigen. Da fließt viel Zeit hinein, das zu optimieren. The scope of Bechstein's design department goes far beyond this, just to influence the sound statement and not least the playability and infinity of adjustment screws await. In addition, however, a universe of possibilities to influence the basic structure of an instrument is there for those with ears to hear. Thus, it can be flexibly adapted to accommodate the wishes of individual artists. Ich denke mal, man hat einmal die akustische Anlage bei uns. Das geht los vom Resonanzboden über den Steg, über die Klangseiten, eine kleine Mensurberechnung oder eine Seitenlänge. Die Abstimmung über diese 88 Töne, die man da zur Verfügung hat, ist die eine Variante, wo man sicherlich Optimierungen vornehmen kann. Im Bodenbereich gibt es immer wieder Möglichkeiten, durch Technologien oder durch bestimmte Parameter, ob es Querschnitte von Hölzern sind oder Wölbungen von Hölzern, Sachen zu verändern. 
Alles zusammen, unterm Strich, ist abhängig von dem Zusammenbau und zum Zusammenspiel aller Komponenten. Also sprich, das geht bis zum Spielwerk, über die Geometrie des Spielwerkes, über die Hammerköpfe, über die Art und Weise der Hammerköpfe, über die Intonation der Hammerköpfe in letzter Instanz. Wenn dies alles zusammenpasst, dann haben wir das Instrument, was wir möchten. Secrets are written into piano building. Some can be spied by those who would copy them. But deeper down lie enigmas that are harder to define. For building in the harmony at the more profound levels of this multifaceted complex instrument, these simply cannot be copied. They stem from the interaction of decades of knowledge and experience in whole departments, not just the ability of the individual. It's rather like that magic feeling of harmony that develops among the players in a good jazz group. A question might be the way different moisture levels in a variety of woods to be joined for soundboard and ribs have to be defined, so that when they're glued up, the curvature and the stresses will do what the theoretical calculations say they must. How should the ribs be placed exactly on the soundboard? And how much should they be thinned down so as to achieve the greatest beam power at the same time as the highest transmission speed? How is the exact course of the bridge to be determined? And how to establish the direction of its grain for the Bechstein sound? A specification which is then machined to a hundredth of a millimeter with the help of a specially developed production program for the CNC technology. A level of precision which again is unattainable by hand. Along with many other things, every single hitch pin for the strings is positioned with pinpoint accuracy. Du erlernst die Technik, die Exaktheit, die Präzision. Aber, und das ist spannend, es wird erst berührend, wenn dein Inneres mitspielt du dein Gefühl mit einzubringen verstehst, dass deine Seele spielt und du mit dem Klang des wunderbaren Instruments in Resonanz kommen kannst, du dich auch von ihm inspirieren lassen kannst. There's an artistic side to all this meticulous exactness as well, by which the mystic area of Sarah Taft Sanley's thoughts touches the construction process. Woods may be almost the same, the metal alloys may be too, even the man, in all his competence for measuring the bridge and plate heights, may always arrive at exactly the same settings to meet the ideal profile established for the acoustic guideline. Strings may be identical. So may the hooks and eyelets. If we take these as a metaphor, they show that even such a complex puzzle of parts as the ones building up a pianoforte can't extinguish that vital, minimal scope for individuality. Just what is it that characterizes a pianist like Dudana Mazmanishvili? Tuning pins may be, as mentioned, no more than tuning pins. And of course, the mechanics of the keyboard are always produced in exactly the same way to meet the Bechstein ideal of precision. Retardation is zero, while lightness and the ideal balance between resistance and fluidity come with increasingly finer, more minute corrections. When the keys are aligned on their special friction-preventing pins, we're dealing with tenths, with trifles. Only the perfectly trained eye can still see what's happening, yet a sensitive touch would feel even smaller differences when playing as a source of impairment, and not just when they're caressed as poetically as Nadia Mokhtari's fingers. The hammers for the stops on the 88 tones are optimally balanced by heat. On top of this, their stems have previously been carefully sorted in line with their natural tone oscillation, so they can be fitted on the keyboard appropriately to the pitch. And yet, there is a magic touch, some sort of spell. In romantic terms, one might almost believe that somewhere hidden in some phase of development, 
a soul has slipped in unseen. At the very least, an individual emerges, a character is formed. A damper may still be relatively unaffected by which individual has installed and adjusted it to achieve a fine decaying dampening for every sound. But a hammerhead will not be able to stay uninfluenced, not during the various grinding processes, and certainly not in the later intonation. C. Bechstein has no intention of limiting this scope for adaptation to the taste of the pianist, but the framework on which individuality is built should begin as a level playing field of unquestionable excellence. The axiom is to achieve the highest levels of control and thus to maintain independence from suppliers. Dissatisfaction about the characteristics of the universally available hammerheads from third-party manufacturers has led to a supreme effort to produce these according to Bechstein's own standards. As the only piano builder in the Western world, C. Bechstein now produced their own hammerheads with a resilient yet dynamic felt covering around a stable core. This is achieved with a new and elaborate process that manages to live up to their own demands for unimpeachable excellence. Here are three D282 models at the Bechstein Center in Berlin for the pianist Ashkar to choose from for a Beethoven concert series. All are equal, yet the possibility remains for each to have its own hint of individuality. I've spent the last 30 years every day, several, many, many hours with the piano. So you develop uh, an intimacy with the instrument, you develop a certain uh, knowledge uh, that is immediate, you know, I touch a piano and I, I know if it speaks to me, if I can, if there is a barrier, if the, if the energy is flowing immediately or do I need to make adjustments and, and again, it's a, it, part of it is very objective, part of it is very subjective and, 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 and so basically I could choose a piano in two seconds. So it remains a mystery, a direct feeling or flair a kind of resonance with the whole, constructed out of 7,000 individual parts in the case of a C. Bechstein. An instrument that ideally inspires and supports the pianist through its sound and playability throughout the concert, enabling him to make the whole spectrum of his creative wish come true. It brings out the unity of the instrument and the pianist, both for him and his audience. can touch deeply. It can actually open up space for miracles to fill, as pianist Hayao Zhang describes. Uh, there are some moments uh, you just forgot yourself where you are, uh, you just log, basically log, logged out from the, from the reality. Um, and then, I think in those moments, um, you swing between this, like this sixth sense, and um, it's, a, it's a beautiful feeling somehow. You just feel like also a little bit drunk somehow, but it's not really drunk. Uh, you're very addicted. You are very. You became very addicted to uh, like you, your music, uh, your music making, the literature, and even got very, somehow very close to the composer, in a sense and. Uh, yeah, I mean, in those in those moments, um, I think I think that's it. Yeah, it, you you feel it. Es kann sich anfühlen, als wäre man der Welt ein wenig entrückt. Du gehst in der Musik auf, gehst im schönen Klang auf. A single tone can bewitch. Its sound can remind one of what Arvo Pertus said. You can lose yourself in it and find yourself in it. A wonderful paradox. Und du kommst an einen Punkt, da möchtest du nicht mehr aufhören. Ich mag nicht, in einem Konzert zum Ende zu kommen, aufhören zu müssen. Nadia Mokhtari recalls the magic of the sound of a C. Bechstein in full flow at one of her first concerts in Tel Aviv. 
I remember it to be really, really special. It was in Israel, and I was preparing for a performance at the Museum of Arts in Tel Aviv. And there was this old Bechstein. And uh, I had to play Jean-Philippe Rameau Suites. And I remember it to be striking because the sound was completely different. It was extremely colorful, full of refinements, and reminded me extremely of these old recordings that I love of old Russian pianists who love to play on Bechstein, like Skriabin and Shostakovich. Tuning up for a concert by Denis Prashayev and Nadia Mokhtari on two grand pianos with compositions of these old masters in the big Mercator Hall. Quite different spatial conditions than in times gone by, yet today's Bechstein has managed to transfer the secrets of its legendary sound to the modern auditorium. Bedingungen im Konzertleben haben dazu geführt, dass viele Hersteller ihre Instrumente kräftiger machen mussten, dass die, der Ton mehr projiziert, auch in akustisch sehr ungünstigen Sälen mit massenhaften Zuschauern oder Zuhörern. Und das hat bei vielen dazu geführt, dass sie ihren Ton sehr viel lauter, sehr viel härter und auch sehr viel brillanter gemacht haben. Für uns war Lautstärke schon ein Thema, Brillanz allerdings bedingt, natürlich bedingt auch also sehr moderne Konzertliteratur, eigentlich ab der Spätromantik auch einen gewissen metallischen, brillanten Ton. Für uns war es aber immer sehr wichtig, dass unsere, dass unsere Klaviere singen, dass wir einen singenden, warmen Ton haben, dass wir gestalten können, dass wir einen Klangfarbenreichtum zur Verfügung haben, den schon Skriabin inspirierte. Und ich denke, dieser warme, singende Ton, ähm, diese Farbvielfalt, das ist etwas, was Bechstein wirklich charakterisiert. Such a wide variety of colors and expressions. Something like a sound, perhaps. Bechstein inspired the old masters, but he's doing it too for the great names of modern genres such as jazz, a genre whose musicians hang their hats on their own sound like nobody else does. Duke Ellington, Dave Brubeck, Chick Corea, Chai Coltrane at historic concerts. Younger stars like the Danish Morten Schantz and his group, who were chosen to represent their country at many a festival around the world. First and foremost, when you play jazz, it's so important to to have this freedom of uh, you have to be able to come up with stories, um, and those stories are sometimes they they appear uh, when you're on stage, when you're communicating musically with your with your colleagues on stage, and you also need precision. So it's a, it's a very it's very um, important to have a, an instrument that can kind of help you getting the precision, but also adding something different to your play that you didn't you didn't know that you had when playing this Bechstein I definitely feel like this is helping uh, me coming up with ideas and feeding me when when you know when I'm when I'm lost and and it uh, it's something that can you know it feels just nice to be playing this kind of dark sounding piano and and it has its own character and it's uh, really hard to tell why it has it but it just it feels good in my fingers a grand piano, like an upright piano or any other instrument at this level, can offer something like a gate to freedom, to one's own world. But before it's allowed to be that at Bechstein, it must go through what are called the seven portals of quality control. Each construction section is checked before further processing is allowed. It has to meet the highest standards set by themselves to 100%. 
Some human institutions like Mr Glass here must give the OK at each gate, otherwise the respective piece of work is corrected, reworked or figuratively polished until it is immaculate. Finished in its perfection. Ready for the artist. Ready for Sarah Taff Sandley and her expression, her goals, her dreams. Ready for the effort and the tension of a CD recording. And ultimately, at the end of all this creativity, ready for the experience of the concert where the CD is released. Long, sometimes demanding routes to the desired end, like those of the artist whose inability to mute her first piano asked a lot in the way of patience from her neighbours. Happily, C. Bechstein has been using its 160 years of innovative power to develop muting systems all the way back to its early beginnings. This has finally been perfectly realised by the electronic Vario system, with its complex samples of the C. Bechstein sound, its compact, handy, intuitive control unit and its headphone connection. Despite his enormous success, Karl Bechstein's style was always the way of modesty, a tradition followed by today's chairman of the board, Mr Freimuth, as he carries the great story forward into a still distant future. Bechstein is first a very big responsibility. A big preußischer König hatte gesagt, er ist der erste Diener seines Staates. So sehe ich mich auch in Bezug auf Bechstein, der erste Diener dieses Unternehmens, dieser großen Historie. Und ich möchte, dass dieses Unternehmen in die Zukunft geführt wird und bin da mir auch sehr sicher, dass das gelingen wird. Wir haben hier in unserer Fabrik eine wunderbare Belegschaft. Alle sind stolz, dieses Produkt herzustellen. Und alle sind aus diesem Grunde auch besonders engagiert. It's the responsibility, the enthusiasm, the perfection and the beauty of the great masters that Gililov and Maisky are able to highlight. It's as though they could make the instruments speak to us. Persian legend, it was the miraculous music that lured the soul into the clay. But as the philosopher Hafiz added, in reality, the soul was the music. Bringing this to masterly ecstasy through sheer devotion, that is the joy. That is the core served by all the axioms, the research and the efforts of C. Bechstein. The happiness of a task, of a journey. Es ist fast unglaublich, aber es ist wirklich so, man hat viele Projekte schon gehabt, wo man sagt, jetzt ist man eigentlich an der Grenze, am Limit von dem, was man machen kann. Nachdem man das Projekt beendet hatte oder die, die Auswirkungen vorgenommen hat, es gab immer wieder Ideen, um Sachen noch weiterzuentwickeln. Ich hoffe, das bleibt auch in Zukunft so. Joy in creating, in all its nuances, constructing, preparing, playing, listening, learning, in the tradition of the great masters, in all their orientations with styles as different as the concert halls of this world. From a Wilhelm Backhaus and an Arthur Rubinstein to a Leonard Bernstein, from the celebrities of jazz to a Chuck Lavelle, 
whose honours include not only the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award for successes with the Allman Brothers, the Rolling Stones, Eric Clapton and George Harrison, but in equal recognition of his commitment to nature conservation, with forest protection topping his list. Circles close. To the wood, to the miraculous tree, to the personal commitment, to the feeling, to touch hearts sustainably, the core, the goal. In a spectrum of moods from the beaming of a Ray Charles to all the ease and pure joy of the show pianist David and Gertz, this isn't the London Bechstein Hall. It would be much too small for this audience of 1200. It's a Bechstein workshop set aside for this special concert. Resonances of delight, resonances of tones, resonances of C. Bechstein. Thank you. 